Bro, Prabu, you can do Prabu. I don't know. No. What do you do? No, I, how can we do not know? In our no, no, video. Pa, no, no, pa, I'm telling Prabu, 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 Prabu. Okay, okay. Can you change your view, each of you? Just change the view to... There, there is an option in the right, right side, that's called view, view button. Then what right to do? Just click the view. Hmm. Then what to do in view? Click, select gallery. Gallery. Okay. Then? What do you see now? No, no, no. Okay, now it's coming. Looking? It's go, it's, it's coming now? No, no, no. It's only coming to you and the Padmanasan Prabhu. Can you try to see now? Now it can be again. Okay. Now it's normal, no? Now it's normal. Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj, sorry about the delay. Okay. Namagyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasudegor, Recording in progress. Prabhanda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So we're continuing Bhakti Shastri. We're studying chapter number 10. We're up to this section here, in the 10th chapter, Arjuna's acceptance and request to hear more of Krishna's opulences. Right? We heard the Chatur Sloki previously, in the last class, we heard the four verses, the four nutshell verses of the Bhagavad Gita, which we call the Chatur Sloki of the Bhagavad Gita. And after hearing those verses, then Arjuna is inspired and he accepts Krishna and he wants to hear more about Lord Krishna's opulences. Oh. So, someone can read this, please. It is not that because Krishna is Arjuna's intimate friend, Arjuna is flattering him by calling him the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth. Whatever Arjuna says in these two verses is confirmed by Vedic truth. Vedic injunctions affirm that only one who takes to devotional service to the Supreme Lord can understand him, whereas others cannot. Each and every word of this verse spoken by Arjuna is confirmed by Vedic injunction. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, so Arjuna had offered his prayer to, to Lord Krishna. He remembered him. After hearing the Chatur Sloki from Lord Krishna, then Arjuna glorifies Lord Krishna. Param Brahm, Param Dham, Pavitram, Paramambhavam, Purusha, like that. Uh, and then after glorifying Krishna, he, then he explains how also great sages, they also accept Krishna as the Supreme. Asita, Narada, Devala, Vyasa, they all accept Krishna as the Supreme. And Arjuna said, I also, now I also accept him as the Supreme. All right, so we spoke about this, I think, in the last class, that scholarship was a waste of time. That uh, if we simply take a scholarly approach to Krishna consciousness, it's not very good for us. Certainly, by knowledge, we make advancement very slowly, we should understand. And the goal of knowledge is to surrender to Krishna. After many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge, he will surrender to Krishna. And such a soul is very rare. Mm -hmm. 
so scholarship in terms of uh, making spiritual advancement is a waste of time. We don't need to read a lot of books. We don't need to cultivate a lot of knowledge. We want to cultivate devotion for Krishna. It's devotion which is important. And if we have devotion, then naturally knowledge will be there also. So here's a quote from chapter 16. Uh, chapter 10, verse number 16. Right? People in general, and the impersonalists in particular, concern themselves mainly with the all-pervading nature of the Supreme. So Arjuna is asking Krishna how he exists in his all-pervading aspect through his different energies. Right? This is coming into the presentation of Krishna's vibhutis. Arjuna is asking Krishna how he exists in his all-pervading aspect. Okay. And this is the next verse, text number 17. Someone read, please. Yes. The common man who has no love for Krishna cannot always think of Krishna. Therefore, he has to think materially. Arjuna is considering the more of thinking of the materialistic person of the world, of this world. The word Kesu, Kesu, Cha Bhavesu refers to material nature. The word Bhava means physical thing because materialistic cannot understand Krishna spirituality. They are advised to concentrate the mind on physical things and try to see how Krishna is manifesting by physical representation. Bhavagira 10.17, Hare Krishna. All right. So, it's just the, the reason why Arjuna is bringing up this. Arjuna, he doesn't have any problem in understanding Krishna. But for the common man, common man, they are not able to think of Krishna in that sense, to think of Krishna as, as a divine supreme abode, <laughs> the param dham, the param dham, pavitram, param, they cannot think of Krishna in that way, difficult for them. They have no faith, they don't have the knowledge. So for them, they have to think of Krishna or think of the supreme in, the object, in terms of the objects of the world. So physical things. So Krishna says, Keshu, Keshu, Chapa, Veshu. Bhava. Bhava means physical things. But this is a different, this is Bhava, not Bhava. We have Bhava, love of God. This is Bhava, physical things. <laughs> One devotee got the name Bhava Nanda. Bhavananda, so Prabhupada used to joke with them, is your name Bhavananda or Bhavananda? <laughs> so Bhava is, you know, the bliss of love of God, and this Bhavananda is a pleasure of material things. So he, it's a, quite a big difference between the two words, the meaning, just opposites. So materialists, they cannot understand Krishna spiritually. So the, the Krishna is going to give us physical things so that we can think of Krishna, how he is manifest through the objects of the world, right? And this is the, the real brunt of this chapter. This is Krishna's opulences coming in verses 19 all the way up to 42. We're, we've already heard some of Krishna's opulences. Remember in the seventh chapter, we heard how Krishna was all pervading. We heard his, the taste in water, the sound in ether, the light of the sun and the moon, these things. So that there was a, there was a, a taste of Krishna's opulences. And we're going to hear many more here in this section. Oh, so here's uh, some of them for you. You can see here the devatas. The different devatas who are all described here. 
right? You've got Indra, Vishnu, Shiva, Kartika, so many different devas are all mentioned there. So they are all mentioned, they are all part of Krishna's vibhutis. Oh my good, this background is too, too dark, I have to change the, the slide. It's difficult to read. But of nature, you can see there's the sun, there's the moon, and there's, there's also Mount Meru, the Himalayas, the ocean, <laughs> the banyan tree, the Ganga. So, so many things are there in the material world to help us to see, think of Krishna. Seasons, months, and then great sages. They're also mentioned, many different sages are mentioned. You can see Prahlad, Kapila, Narada, Vyasa. Sukracharya. And then philosophical truth. Philosophical truths. We have the uh, The letter A <laughs> of still of letters I am A. You have the super soul, you have the mind, you have dual compounds. So we have to learn some these things. We should be familiar with these different opulences of Krishna, because they're all mentioned here in the Bhagavad Gita. Vedic mantras, Samaveda, chanting, chanting Om, So what, what we want to do here, oh, oh well here is, there was one thing there we wanted to do, there's a pair exercise. What I thought we could do, we can have a quiz, you can have a quiz. You have a pair, you have a partner, pairs, how many people do we have here today, this morning? Sixteen, Guru Maharaj. Sixteen, okay, so eight pairs. And what you do, you can quiz your partner. You have to ask him. You know, Krishna says in the in the Bhagavad Gita. You know the way we do it usually. They will, you have to fill in the blank of seasons. I am what? Of mountains. I am what? Of rivers. I am what? Of the Adityas. Who am I? These different things. So you could just take a few minutes just to quiz each other to see how well you know these vibhutis. Because this is something which would certainly will come up in the, in the closed book test. They'll ask you some vibhutis and you'll have to fill in the blanks. Of the Vedas, what? Of seasons, what? So, I want you to do that, take a few minutes first of all to do that, and after you've quizzed each other, and then answer these two questions. How has Krishna's vibhutis mentioned, help, how has helped you to remember Krishna? And select two vibhutis mentioned, specifically useful for preaching. 
and discuss their significance. So the first question helps us to understand the importance of these vibhutis, that they help us to remember Krishna. So how? How did it help you to remember Krishna? All right. So everyone has a partner? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Take a few minutes, first of all, to quiz each other on, this, on these vibhutis. Make sure you know these. You get to know them. What's the timing, Maharaj? Well, ten minutes, because you have to do a little quiz, and then they want you to think about these two questions. Yes, yes Maharaj. Amar Mimai Prabhu, you can join any of the rooms. Yes, yes, yes.
We're all returning back, Guru Maharaj. Okay, good. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is everyone back now? Yes, Guru Maharaj, everyone is back. Okay. All right. So we would like to hear some contribution from about the first question. How did Krishna's vibhutis help you to remember Krishna? Uh, I, did it help you to remember Krishna? I hope so. Maharaj, mm. Shali. Yes. Okay. Uh, in uh, 10.30, uh, Krishna is telling that Amali Deity is something Prahat Maharaj. If we, uh, uh, if we think of the pure, pure, pure devotee, we can uh, constantly think of Krishna like that, Hare Krishna. I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch everything you said, Prabhu. Yes, yes, well, what what is uh, telling is basically if we remember pure devotees like Prahlad Maharaj, um, uh, he, we can remember Krishna very easily. Okay, so, if you remember pure devotees. Okay, so that's a specific vibhuti, right? That's actually <laughs> maybe going to the second question. Yeah? But the first question is more general. Krishna's vibhutis in general, you know, overall. How they help you to remember Krishna? It's yeah. just that uh, when we see that uh, all the creations around us are uh, in, in, nothing is in our hands and things are happening uh, not according to what we are thinking. So all the uh, things like the flower blooming and uh, the seasons and uh, every possible thing like the waters, the ganges or the it's everything uh, reminds that uh, reminds us that we are not the owner and controller of anything. So everything belongs to Krishna. Okay. <laughs> We're seeing Hare Krishna. Krishna. Yes. So uh, group two. Okay. Please carry on, Guru Smarana Mataji. Please carry on. We are from group two, and it's myself and Jagriti Mataji. Um, we um. The, for the first, uh, on how Krishna's vibhuti, we mentioned about the Lord Krishna speaking in text 21, that of the lights, I am the radiant sun. So whenever we see the sun, we remind us of Krishna. And also we know that uh, Krishna also says the sun and the moon are my eyes. So in that way, uh, remember, and also fire also we mentioned. Uh, that was on the first question. And the second question we mentioned was the um, vibhutis that helps us in our preaching and discussing their significance is how Lord Krishna says of the chanting of the holy name, Japa, and also um, uh, been, um, uh, and on, on verse 32, uh, sorry, 34, um, if, if uh, Krishna says, I'm all devouring death. So, in the preaching purpose, um, uh, as Sri Prabhupada mentions, if we, uh, if we don't uh, um, surrender unto Krishna living, then definitely at the time of death, uh, we will surrender unto his lotus feet. So, oh, very nice. You picked out two very nice vibhutis there. We have, first of all, the chanting of the holy names, and then Krishna's reference to death. For the, for the atheists, of course, they see God as death. So good for preaching. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Someone else like to 
Give oh. Krishna Maharaj. Yes. So yeah, we are from group one. Uh, yeah, I'll also pick up 10.21. Basically, yes, when I go for Japatan or morning walk, uh, so yeah, the sun, when we see sun, actually that reminds me of Krishna and moon. Whenever I'm returning from office, I see moonlight and all that also reminds me of Krishna. And basically these two vibhutis, I will consider we can preach them because in North India, I have seen basically in Bihar, they will worship, uh, they will uh, worship sun during Chhat Puja and they will uh, worship this Karva Chot also, uh, like they will worship the moon. So actually we can make them understand where where the actual source is, who's the actual creator. We can make them understand that the sun's energy is actually coming from Krishna's body. The sun and the moon are not the actual creator whom they are worshiping. They can actually worship the, the Krishna, the actual source and creator. Also, like uh, I would like to just give an example, like if we have direct contact with the prime minister, we won't reach out to the CM. So if we know who's actual creator, who's the actual God, we can directly worship him. Mm -hmm. So like this, we can use it that as a preaching method. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was this point again about the Prime Minister, if we know the Prime Minister? Right. Yeah, if we know the Prime Minister, we don't have to reach out to the Finance Minister or oh, Education okay. Minister. Like we have, like we know who's the actual, who's the actual God. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so we don't have to reach out to the demigods, like okay, this, that. Directly we can have a direct contact by chanting the name of Lord Krishna. Okay, good, very nice, yes. So. Very good. So, Guru Maharaj, just um, just one more point. Um, you know, when, when we look at what Parashara Muni has mentioned that, you know, Bhagawan, the six opulences and Krishna is full in all the six opulences. And similarly, when you look at each of these descriptions, um, Krishna is the most powerful. He's like the, the, the superlative of each of this, right? Amongst all the trees, he's the Banyan tree. So, once again, it's corresponding to the superlative or the highest amongst all the trees, amongst all the mountains. And something which really struck me was that amongst all senses, um, Krishna is the mind. Most of the time, we always look at the mind as the monkey mind. But this was like a paradigm shift for me when I said that, when I read that, yeah, actually, Krishna is saying, I'm the mind, you know, so use the mind in, in the right service of the Lord. Um, in terms of the preaching aspects, um, I, I think it's easy to remember Lord Krishna if we are very deliberate about it. Uh, if we had, like for example, some of the examples given, you know, amongst all sacrifices, I'm Japa, uh, I'm the sun and the moon, etc. So I think if we are very, very deliberate, um, you know, it's easy to remember Krishna about, and then in, in my part of the world, um, you know, where many South Indians are worshippers of Lord Murga. So I, I, I try to use this as a connection um, for them to understand that Krishna says, you know, he's, he's appreciating the power, the prowess of Murugan. And he says uh, amongst all generals is um, his Kartikeya. Uh, but it doesn't work the other way. A lot of South Indians, they... They say that, oh, Kartikeya is as good as Krishna, <laughs> you know, the other way. Uh, they, they, they do it wrongly. So I, I use that as a good preaching point, but of course, in a very subtle manner. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. The, the, that's uh, the Mayavadi thing that, oh, Kartikeya is as good as Krishna. They're all one. All the gods are one. So that's the uh, Mayavadi coming out. And uh, I'm thinking also that Krishna's uh, the ability to remember to remember Krishna. It's a training of the mind. The mind is the king of the senses. You were talking about the mind, so it's mentioned there. The mind is the king of the senses. So when Krishna said of the senses, I'm the mind. The mind is above the senses, controlling the senses. So it's superior to the other senses. As you, Krishna is superlative, he's the topmost, he's the greatest. So everything which is wonderful and opulent, that is Krishna, and should remind us of Krishna, that Krishna is the most wonderful, he's the most opulent, he's the best of everything. So the vibhutis. 
and for, for preaching, Prabhupada would often say, who has not seen God? When people would challenge, they want to see God, why can't we see God? Then Prabhupada would simply point out, who has not seen the light of the sun and the moon? How can you say you've not seen God? Everywhere you can see God in everything. So this is Krishna's vibhutis. All right, so of seasons, Krishna is what season? Agnosis. No, from spring, it is spring. Spring, spring. Of seasons. Spring. What? Spring? Only spring? Flower-bearing flower spring. Flower-bearing spring, right. If you're asked like that in the exam, you have to give the full answer. You just say, flower-bearing spring, all right? Okay. So, uh, then at the end of the chapter, Krishna concludes here. Yad yad vibhuti mat sadvam srimad urjitam eva va tad tad eva vagachatvam mama tejo misha sambhavam. Know that all opulent, beautiful, and glorious creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. So, what is that spark of Krishna's splendor? What is that spark? The Vibhuti. Is it the Vibhuti? No. Any glorious or beautiful existence? No. The spark of. Krishna. Krishna's opulence? Well, Krishna goes on, he said, What need is there, O Arjun, for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support this entire creation. So what is that fragment of Krishna? The energy of Krishna. No, not exactly. Krishna is pervading and supporting the entire creation. Strength, strength and power. Huh? Strength power. No. Material nature? No. His glance actually. His super soul. Yes, the super soul. The single fragment of Krishna which is pervading and supporting this entire creation. That is the super soul. Ekam Shena Stitok Jagat. So Krishna is pervading everything as a super in the it's a super soul everywhere, right? In every atom, in the hearts of every living entity, in every atom everywhere. So it's pervading and supporting. So th this is just a spark of Krishna's splendor. There's so much more. This is just the material world, Krishna's external energy. But the, in, the spiritual energy, the internal potency, so much more. So, it's so opulent, so beautiful, so glorious. We're just seeing a tiny, the dim reflection. This is a cloudy region, the material world. It, it, it's not much of Krishna's splendor. But we're so fascinated by the material world, we become so bewildered by the material energy. So how much wonderful the spiritual world must be. And we want to go there to the spiritual world, right? So that's the tenth chapter concluded, right? Any questions on the tenth chapter before we go? Maharaj, I have questions. Actually, among monks, it is known as he is a Margasis. 
But generally, we, we uh, prefer that Kartik is the highest, uh, pious month. So why Margus is, uh, is telling? What is that significance of Mar Margus's month? Well, it's Krishna's favorite month. Krishna is a person and he likes certain things, you see. You have to understand Krishna. He's a person and he likes certain things he likes, certain things he doesn't like. Some things are more pleasing to him than others. All right? Right. And he has told that among compound words, he is the dual, dual compound. What is that dual compound? Oh, that's explained in the purport. You read the purport, it will tell you. What is that? 33 mark. Yes, any other questions? Maharaj, would it be correct to looking at the Vibhutis of Lord Krishna? It just appears that in one sense Krishna is everything. Yes. And everything is but a manifestation of Krishna's energy. So. Yes. Everything is a manifestation of Krishna's energy, you're right. That is Krishna's potent. Shankaracharya, he took that from the Veda, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma, that everything is Brahman. It's all Krishna's energy. Certainly, Krishna said, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, everything comes from me, everything material and spiritual, it all comes from me. But still, there are certain vibhutis, certain special features of Lord Krishna, by which we can directly appreciate Krishna. We can think more of Krishna because Krishna's mentioned, Krishna's highlighted these things. Because Arjuna was asking, how can ordinary people think of Krishna? So Krishna said, then think of me like this, all right? Obese, I am the lion. And Prabhupada said, lion is the king of the jungle. And the flowing rivers, I am the Ganga, the Ganges. The Ganges is the greatest of holy rivers coming from the, uh, from, uh, the, from the lotus feet Mecca. of Lord Vishnu, coming through the Kajyo Ocean down to this planet. So, very special water. So, so many different features are given to us. We, if he just said everything is Krishna, <laughs> yeah, we can say it's all Krishna, it's all, but there's still there are special features which help to enhance our feeling and remembrance of Krishna. Something which is opulent and supreme and powerful, then we can, oh, this, is, this must be Krishna, Krishna's potency. If we just say everything is Krishna, then it becomes impersonal. We can easily take to impersonalism, think, well, it's all, it's all one. Pantheism, the world is Krishna. But still, Krishna is a person and he has his energies. So these vibhutis, these different potencies, different opulences, special features of Krishna are there. And Krishna's speaking them to remind all the ordinary people who are not able to understand Krishna as a divine person, that he's there through all of these different features, powerful features of the material world, prominent, powerful features, things. We know water without any taste wouldn't be water. And it's the significant, the light, could we have sun without light? Impossible. 
So all the different elements of the creation, sound, the syllable Om and the Vedic mantras, the sound is there, and sound, air, the fire, water, earth, the original fragrance of the earth. So all of these things, are, they're very much part of the material creation. They're very prominent features here in the material world. And they're there in the Bhagavad Gita to remind us that this is Krishna's potency. Just like when, when Prabhupada was going for a morning walk, one young man said, Oh, Prabhupada, look at the sunrise, isn't it beautiful? And Prabhupada said to him, he said, if you're thinking like that, you'll have to take birth again. So we don't want to just appreciate the beauty of nature, but we want to understand the person who's behind the nature. So it's not just, oh, the sun is very nice, the light of the sun, oh, the moon is very cooling, like that. But we have to understand Krishna. Krishna's behind all of these things. It's all Krishna's creation, and Krishna's the Supreme Lord over everything. And the Sun God and the Moon God, they're all worshipping Krishna. They're all servants of Lord Krishna. So we do need to practice remembering Krishna. Remembering Krishna, this is it. most, it, it's so easy for us to remember Krishna, but it's so easy for us to forget him also because of our restless mind. So we have to practice bringing our mind back. So we train ourselves, remembering these different opulences, reading the Bhagavad Gita and reciting different slokas helps us to remember Krishna. All right. Okay, any other question? Let me see, are you able to sh see this slideshow? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Oh, we can see it, good, okay. So we're going to go on to the 11th chapter here. Okay. The eleventh chapter, the universal form, or the Vishwarupa Darshan. All right, so here's what we're going to be studying. We'll hear first of all the explanation why devotees are not concerned with seeing the Vishwarup. As devotees, we're not very much anxious to see the universal form. Right? You agree? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Why? Why is that? Why, is, why, why you don't want to see the universal form? It's a material form. It's temporary. temporary. Yeah, but it's Krishna, right? It's difficult to offer personal devotional service. Sorry? Very difficult. It's very difficult to offer personal devotional service like offering garlands or boga. Very difficult. <laughs> yes, right. That's a good point. Very nice. Yeah. How? More, it's more towards awe and reverence than the loving services. Right. Yeah. I didn't... There cannot be any relation between Krishna and the devotee in that form. Mm, yeah. Also, yes. It's not. There's not going to be any real personal exchange. All right, then we will also explain about the change in relationship between Krishna and Arjuna, described in the 14th verse of this chapter. Change in relationship. Initially, Krishna and Arjuna were friends. Of course, we saw also in the second chapter, Arjuna surrendered to Krishna and Krishna became his teacher. But we're going to see in the 14th, what's going to happen in, the fourth, in, in this 11th chapter? After Krishna shows the universal form, what will happen? 
Arjuna is bewildered and uh, he says, I don't want to see this. Uh, I want to see you back in your uh, this form, the two-handed form. Well, also, he becomes very frightful. He's becoming fearful, so he's asking forgiveness. He's now seeing the Supreme Lord as the oh, in reverence form. So he's asking him forgiveness. Yeah, he felt he'd, he'd been disrespectful to Krishna not giving him proper respect. Okay, but anyway, that will come, we'll come to that. But then the significance of Arjuna referring to Krishna is, Hey Krishna, hey Yadava, hey Sakaiti. This is nice. It's a, a famous verse in this chapter. Actually, if you look through the Bhagavad, if you look through Prabhupada's lectures, it's interesting, Prabhupada never lectured even one, one lecture on the 11th chapter. <laughs> Prabhupada just left it alone, he didn't touch it. His classes were on other chapters, not on the 11th chapter. And then the example of Krishna displaying the Chaturbhuj to Arjuna establishing Krishna as the original personality of Godhead. Verse 46, and then finally, points relevant for personal application from the formula of Krishna consciousness given in the Bhagavad Gita 1155. All right, so we have to look at all these points as we go through the 11th chapter. So connection with the previous chapter, connection. Chapter 10, we were hearing about Krishna's opulences. This chapter reveals Krishna as the cause of all causes. He is even the cause of the Mahavishnu from whom the material universes emanate. Krishna is not an incarnation, he is the source of all incarnations. That has been completely explained in the last chapter. It was explained, Krishna is the source of everything, right? Ahamsa, Rasya, Prabhavo, everything comes from me. Of course, Krishna had said similar things earlier also. He said, Sarvam itam ritam manye yam mam vadisikeshava. There's no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me. So Krishna is not an avatar, he's avatari. He's the source of all the incarnations. Everything comes from him. And Vishnu is also, generally we, we understand that the incarnations which come in the world, they come from Vishnu, from Shirodakshai Vishnu or Garbhodakshai Vishnu. But Vishnu also has his origin from Krishna. Krishna is the original seed of all existences. So, another point. Now, as far as Arjuna is concerned, he says that his illusion is over. This means that Arjuna no longer thinks of Krishna as a mere human being, as a friend of his, but as the source of everything. Arjuna is very enlightened and is glad that he has such a great friend as Krishna. But now he is thinking that although he may accept Krishna as the source of everything, others may not. So, in order to establish Krishna's divinity for all, he is requesting Krishna in this chapter to show his universal form. Right? In the, ninth, in the tenth chapter, Krishna had established himself philosophically as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Arjuna feels that's not enough just to, you know, just to do it philosophically. 
He wants Krishna to actually show visually how he is the Supreme Lord. And so this is the connection between the 10th chapter and the 11th chapter. Oh, that was from Prabhupada's purport. Okay, here's the overview of the chapter. It begins with Arjuna's request. Arjuna's requesting to see Krishna's universal form and Krishna's then Krishna describes his universal form. And Tanjai also describes Arjuna's vision. And that goes up to text 31. And then we, then Krishna will explain about his Kala Rup. Kala Rup, his form is time. And Krishna will say, Time I am. And he will also instruct Arjuna. Nimitta matra, nimitta matra bhava savya sachin. Just become an instrument in my service. And so important part here in this 11th chapter, Krishna, Arjuna asks Krishna to identify himself. Who is he? Because he saw Krishna's universal form. So Arjuna was bewildered. And he asked Krishna, who are you? And then at that time Krishna says, time I am. Kalos means Kalakrit Prabhupada. Time I am, destroyer of the world. And I've come to claim everyone. But for you Pandavas, everyone will be, they'll meet their death. They'll take another body. So after Krishna speaks like this, then Arjuna offers prayers to Lord Krishna. And that's when we hear, Hey, uh, hey, hey Sakaiti, Hey Krishna, Hey Madhava, Hey Sakaiti. Now, only pure devotees, and text 47 up to the end, only pure devotees can see Krishna's two arm form. Other Devotees, mixed devotees, common people, they may see Krishna, they don't understand Krishna. They see him as having a material body. But the pure devotees, they're blessed to see Krishna's two arm, the supreme form, the original form, two arm. But Krishna was actually there with his forearm form on Kurukshetra, on the on the battlefield of Kurukshetra is Vasudev Krishna, Krishna in his forearm form. But the, the two-arm form is for the pure devotees. All right, so here's two reasons why Arjuna asked to see the Vishwarup. Why? Why should Arjuna want to see the Vishwarup? It, it wasn't pleasing, wasn't so beautiful. He'd already seen the most attractive form of Lord Krishna, but he wants to see the universal form. So one reason from the purport of the first verse, to establish Krishna's divinity for everyone. That Krishna is the Supreme Lord, he's God himself. And then secondly, in purport of text number three, to set a criterion. There are other people in the Kali Yuga, there are many people claiming to be God. So we can request them, if you are God, show me your universal form. This is a criterion. You, if you say you're God, then you should show us the universal form. Sometimes we challenge people in this way. The fact is, the devotee is not concerned with seeing the Vishwarup, the universal form. But Arjuna wanted to see it to substantiate Krishna's statements, so that in the future, 
people could understand that Krishna not only theoretically or philosophically presented himself as the Supreme, but actually presented himself as such to Arjuna. From the 8th verse of the 11th chapter, Purpur. So, if Krishna had only established himself as God by saying I'm God, it wouldn't have been so effective. That's why Arjuna wants Krishna to actually show that he's also God. And we can see similar incident, incidences like with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually the Lord? You know, certainly the devotees were claiming that he was the Lord. But generally he wouldn't reveal himself as the Lord. But to some devotees he did. Like to Sabhaboma Bhattacharya, he appeared in his sadbuj form. And then to Ramananda Rai, he revealed to Ramananda Rai that he is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. So there were examples. Maharaj, for Kesav Kashmir, he also revealed Maharaj, Kesav Kashmir. Sorry? Kesav Kashmir, he also revealed his form Maharaj. Oh, Kesav Kashmir? Did he? No, I'm asking you Maharaj, that's a, that's a doubt Maharaj. Uh, I don't remember that he, certainly what happened was the Lord, uh, well, Mother Saraswati came into the, into the dream of Keshava Kashmiri and she told him that, th that this person is actually my master. That was what happened with Keshava Kashmiri because he was a devotee of Mother Saraswati. So Keshava Kashmiri thought, I must have offended Mother Saraswati because this young man has defeated me. But that night Mother Saraswati came and spoke to Keshava Kashmiri and told him that, that that young man is my Lord and Master. Okay, Advaita Acharya. Uh, I don't know where that's described. In South Korea, uh, huh? In South Korea, um, uh, he was uh, he had shown the Vishwarup to Advaita Acharya. Uh, is it in the Chaitanya Charitamrita? It is in Chaitanya Bhagavatam Master Ali. Okay, so it's in the Chaitanya Bhagavatam, maybe. All right, okay, so he showed to Advaita Acharya. He showed him the universal form. I don't know why, why he would want to show the universal form. But anyway, uh, we cannot understand the past tense of the Lord. I do remember seeing a picture like that. I think so, Advaita Acharya is worshipping the Lord. Okay, we'll go ahead. Someone can read this for us? Purport, the third verse. Please read. But the Lord, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the Lord can understand also that Arjuna wants to see the universal form to convince others. Arjuna did not have any personal desire for confirmation. Krishna also understands that Arjuna wants to see the universal form to set a criterion, for in the future there would be so many impostors who would pose themselves as incarnations of God. The people, therefore, should be careful. One, should, one who claims to be Krishna should be prepared to show his universal form to confirm his claim to the people. Hare Krishna. Mm, thank you. Yes. Mm. Confirm the claim to the people. <laughs> Your God, show me the unit. So, here's an exercise for us on this point. Preaching work, right? We have to use this, this a common topic. We will often have to preach about this kind of thing. 
Okay, divide into groups of three devotees each. How many people have we got? Sixteen, is it? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj, now we have more. Um, Nineteen. Eighteen. Twenty. Uh, Nineteen. Okay. Okay, so there are groups of three and one group will be four. Right? No, uh, six, six, seven. Okay. Oh, three, three devotees. Okay, okay. Three, six, there'll be six groups. Okay. And so here's the, the challenge. Defeat the following by preaching. Impo the imposter said, I am God. And we say, oh, fine, show me your universal form. And the imposter says, ah, but you must have the eyes to see it. So we may respond, then give me the eyes as you gave Arjuna. And the imposter said, first you must surrender like Arjuna. So what do you say now after that? <laughs> All right, we'll give you five minutes. See what you can come up with, how to respond to this. Priti Priyanka Kumar Deep and Nabarash Prabhu, can you all please join a group? Hare Krishna Prabhu, I didn't get the link. That pop up. Just a minute. I do not know why you... Satish Prabhu, you are there in uh, room number five, no? Kumardeep? Kumardeep, you are in room number two, you have not joined yet. I didn't get the that drop down to join. It was already sent, Prabhu, I, I'm not... Yeah, it was sent to everybody. I'm so sorry.
Somebody is progressively coming back into the room, Guru Mahesh. Okay, good. So? Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Did you come up with a good answer? Oh. Shall, shall we start or it's uh, like order? Uh, well, let's hear. Uh, yeah, you can begin, Prabhu. Go ahead. Which group are you in? Actually, I'm in. I think they're group, 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 group three. Group four. three. I think they're group three. Three. Okay. okay. So, what what was your response to this? Uh, Maras, uh, if any, uh, anybody gets that uh, claims that he is God, first we should uh, tell that whether you can lift, go, or kneel like that. Uh, and uh, in some of the places, uh, they claim that I'm Kali Kaliyoga God. In my area, there is one person they claim that I'm the Kaliyoga God. But in scripture, they still that still the Kali Yuga is for like 30,000 years is there. So how you should, how you claim you are Kali Yuga God like that, you can tell. Hare Krishna. There are three things we discussed in this uh, um, Maharaj. Uh, so one was that uh, the Lord has told when he will appear. And actually, um, uh, in every Yuga, he, uh, he takes some incarnation and comes. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a hidden incarnation. So, um, so in Kali Yuga, it is told that he will come at the end of uh, Kali Yuga. So, because everything is given, and he, he suddenly says, some imposter comes and says he is God, then it is not given in the Vedas. So, the second point is, if he's really able to, he wants to prove that he is God, then why why can't he just uh, you know exhibit some of Krishna's opulences or lift the? <coughs> he had he did the superhuman acts like lifting Govardhan and killing all the demons. So. <coughs> He, he can, uh, he, uh, means he can uh, do any of those things and show it to us. And the third one we were thinking was um, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, specifically came uh, to show that uh, we all have to be, he set an exemplary life. Uh, he never told that he is God. He set an exemplary life being a devotee and uh, uh, told us how to be, become and uh, become a devotee and surrender unto Krishna. So, that was his. Uh... Okay, so you argue like that. Yeah, before before uh, uh, Arjuna surrendered, Krishna showed so many uh, uh, performed so many Herculean tasks which a normal person cannot perform. So we can ask him to show the imposter to show him show those things what he has done till now for us to surrender. Okay. All right, thank you. Let's hear from another group. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I'm from a group consisting of Dhyanidhi Prabhu and Dipshika Mataji. And we discussed that first of all, if he says you must surrender uh, like Arjun, then we cannot just blindly surrender to anyone. We have to ask who is your guru and which parampara they're coming from. And also whether he is setting up, a, he is really a spiritual, he is really um, setting an ideal example as mentioned before. And we quoted on the verse of uh, if he is really a bona fide person, then he will come, he'll, he has a, a, he's coming from a parampara of idol spiritual master. He's able to control his senses and everything. And also as um, uh, earlier mentioned, uh, he should uh, exhibit his uh, uh, opulence or even if we can ask to show by his activity, we can ask him to lift even a small pebble on his left little finger and see if he can do that because Lord Krishna lifted a great mountain. And also uh, we also said that uh, his uh, bodily effulgence will be so bright that it will be difficult to even uh, stand there and see him. Um, and also uh, Dhyanidhi Prabhu uh, said that maybe we should ask him to show his uh, Sudarshan Chakra because Lord can show his Sudarshan Chakra to anyone if he really is God. And um, yes, these were the points, Hare Krishna. Okay, some interesting points, yes. 
Oh yeah. Thank you. Right? Another group would like to offer something? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. We were in group four, myself, Sakya and the baby, and uh, Mini Mohan Prabhu. So uh, uh, we came up with this point that Arjuna uh, was able to appreciate Krishna's uh, divinity more after seeing the uh, universal form. So we can tell the imposter, we cannot just surrender unto you. First of all, show your universal form, then we can appreciate your qualities more. Uh, like that we were saying that at least the imposter has to show us something of course the imposter will not be able to but um, we cannot just surrender like that we'll see that arjuna was also able to appreciate more after having seen the universal forms first of all we show the universal form then comes the question of surrender thank uh -huh. you Lord. Mm -hmm. okay first surrender and then show the <laughs> first show the universal form and then we'll surrender <laughs> You can have a lot of arguments there. All right. Hi, yes. Hi, another another. Uh, we can, yes. We can also add that uh, you know from scriptures it is says that Bhagavan the by definition he has six opulences in full. But then we can ask a person: Do you have like the six opulences like f fame, knowledge, power, renunciation, beauty? Uh, we can ask a person. So if if that we can tell the person, if we don't have any of these in full, then you cannot claim to be God. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. Maharaj, uh, uh, one thing I have to ask, shall I, Maharaj? Yes. Uh, actually, if any person claims to God, we should see that whether he is uh, uh, having that, but that's what is this is. If he's uh, having, that, he's not God. He's a rascal number one. <laughs> if he's what? If he's having that, uh, but that old age and disease, he's not uh, God, he's rascal number one. Oh, oh if he has a material body, if he's getting old and if he's getting and Because old, uh, Lord Krishna has a transcendental body, but if anybody claims that he's God, then we should say that he's, whether he's having, but that old age and disease. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Prabhu Maharaj, uh, I'll add one more thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's quite funny. There was a Prabhu who mentioned in a lecture that, you know, Krishna has all these auspicious signs on his foot, like all the, the thunderbolt, the lotus, all that. So if someone claims to be God, you say, okay, you just show me your foot, I'll see for myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that any other groups didn't contribute yet? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, yes, we discussed like uh, Krishna is holding six opulences. So uh, at least show show me uh, show us one of the opulences so that we have so that our forms get stronger, faith gets stronger, and uh, Brahma Jyoti emanates from the body of Krishna. So from that also we can identify whether. Uh, his Krishna or just a normal one. Okay. Yes. Because he, he 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 must show at least one of the qualities only. Then we can have we can surrender. Hmm. Uh, uh, and he should be in the disciplic succession like uh, 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 and uh, he should have like he should show us one of the pastimes like lifting of Govardhan here and others. Mm -hmm. Oh, we we could also say okay. We could also say okay. Shishasti hamsadi mam tvam prapanam. I've surrendered. Now show me. <laughs> yes. All right. Anybody else? Any other group? Is that everyone? Maharaj, just one one um, one point. You yes. know, this question is asking about surrender. Yes. Um, but but. It starts with faith first. What has this guy done for me to have built the faith in myself? You know, have I heard anything about him? Have I seen anything? So tell me something which can allow me to build my faith in you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should have faith, yes. So it's his duty to give faith, right? We don't just surrender 
immediately we have to hear we should be spiritually satisfied and nourished and then we can surrender, then we can commit ourselves. Hearing. So surrendering is not something which we do immediately, but gradually we would surrender. Okay. So it's very nice to hear you all preaching like that. Very good. We'll go ahead. Yes. This is uh, Purport 11.4. Someone can read for us? Oh, Krishna. Yes, someone read, please. If, if the infinite, if the infinite reveals himself, then it is possible to understand the nature of the infinite by the grace of the infinite. The word Yogeshwara is also very significant. Here, because the Lord has inconvenient power, if he likes, he can reveal himself by his grace, although he is unlimited. Therefore, Arjuna pleads for the inconvenient grace of the Krishna. He does not give Krishna orders. Krishna is not obliged to himself, uh, obliged to uh, reveal himself unless one surrenders fully Krishna consciousness and engage in devotional service. Thus, it is not possible for a person who depend on the strength of their mental speculation to see Krishna, Hare Krishna. All right, so some important points Prabhupada is making here. We have to understand that Krishna has inconceivable power, powers far beyond anything we can measure. Right? He can go against all the laws of nature inconceivable powers and, and we see examples of inconceivable power in nature just like the light of the sun the, the heat and energy which is coming from the sun every day every moment it's inconceivable so much power and light is heating the whole universe and so there are examples of inconceivable powers everywhere in the world. You look at the, the depths of the ocean and the power of the seas and the wind and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, cycles of seasons which come. There's so many inconceivable powers which are there within the world. And these powers are just simply some energy of the Supreme Lord. So Prabhupada said, we want to understand God, he has inconceivable powers, we cannot understand the, the inconceivable. But if the Lord wants to reveal himself to the devotee, then the Lord can reveal himself. So we need to have the grace of Krishna to understand Krishna. By the mercy of Krishna, then we can know Krishna. And we get the mercy of Krishna from Krishna's devotees. Krishna's devotees are more merciful even than Krishna. They give the mercy by which we can come to know Krishna. So Krishna reveals himself when he's pleased by the devotees. But the mental speculators, they can never understand Krishna. Power of the mind, our mind and senses are limited so the limited cannot understand the unlimited. Krishna is unlimited, inconceivable. So, therefore, we have to surrender to Krishna. And with surrender, Krishna reveals himself. Okay, some more exercises here. Ask, ask students to refresh themselves on verse 4 and read the purport again. All right, verse 4. And then we request them in pairs to identify what is, what is meant by the term, by the grace of the infinite. Why do you think this is logically true? 
ask the students to identify ways in which the doctrine of grace could be misunderstood or misapplied. If you explore this in some depth, you could touch on academic integrity. Request students to identify how they could apply this understanding with regard to their attitude and their behavior. Well, it's quite an in-depth question here. <laughs> Uh, we'll look at the first part anyway, you know, maybe you can read the purport of verse number four and then discuss what we mean by the grace of the infinite and why do you think this is true? All right? So is it going to be different partners? We had groups of three, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'll, I'll organize it in groups of two again. Okay. How much of time are you giving us, Guru Maharaj? Well, you have to read the purport of text four, and then, so that would take some time, and then you have to discuss this. It, it's, it's not such a big purport. It's not, it's just half a page. The purple is half a page, but you can read it through. We'll give you, we'll give you ten minutes, I guess. You okay. Need ten minutes.
Raj, I came back because I was alone in my group, so I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Ji, are you there? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Yes. So you, I you... came back because I was alone in my group, oh, so I didn't know. Everyone's coming now. It's finished. Okay. They'll all come back now. All right. Thank you. We're all returning, Guru Maharaj. Okay, very good. Right. So, we wanted to begin with uh, the meaning of the term, by the grace of the infinite. How do we understand this term? What do you think? What is the meaning? By the grace of the infinite means? By the mercy of the Lord. By the mercy of the Lord, yes. It's the same thing, right? You're just, yeah. And how, do you think this is logically true? Can you? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Why? Yes. Yeah. Because nothing moves without, you know, the grace or the will of the Lord. Uh, so, everything happens uh, if, if and when the Lord desires that to happen. Yes. Anybody else? We think that it is logically true because uh, we, we all have uh, limited senses and we can understand it that we can't see beyond a particular... Uh, um, in our vision is only to a limited uh, capacity and uh, all our senses are only to a limited uh, capacity. So, um, only if, if we get the grace of the Lord, um, then, we even uh, understand the shloka Brahmanda Brahmite Pon Bhagyavan Ji Guru Krishna Prasadipai Bhakti Lata Beach. So one has to be fortunate fortunate enough to get the grace of the Lord. Only then the seed of um, devotional service will sprout in him. Yes. Okay. I think. I Yes. By the mercy of Mahaprabhu, they could be able to know the Mahaprabhu. <laughs> yes, by the mercy of Mahaprabhu, we can know Mahaprabhu. The Lord can reveal Himself to His devotees. Yes. So we have the Sukriti Prabhaj to get that grace also. So Sorry? we should work towards it. What did you say? So we should have the Sukriti to even get that. So we should work towards the, uh, work towards it. All right, so that's the next point which is coming up, that how could this question of grace, the idea of getting the mercy, how could it be misunderstood or misapplied? Okay, Maharaji can speak. Yes, go ahead, Maharaji. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. We, uh, we came up with this point that some, somebody can think because it is going to happen by the mercy of the Lord, so let us not do anything on our part. Let us not even render devotional service. But um, here it is mentioned in the proper that it is only by rendering your devotional service the Lord will reveal himself to us. If somebody can take it to take it in a way that, okay, let us not do anything. It is going to happen by the mercy of the Lord. So the Lord will decide. We don't need to do anything on our part. Right. Yes. Yeah, good. Yes. Yeah. Also, the other way could be some people could uh, simply uh, perform a devotional service with the motive that, uh, uh, I mean, that I want to know the Lord like that. I mean, not not in a mood to serve the Lord, but with a more like a mood to uh, like gain the knowledge about the Lord. Like I'll perform devotional service with a mood that... Uh, I want to ultimately come to know who the Lord is and like that, not with the mood to serve the Lord. Mm, very good. Yes, nice point. Mm -hmm. People, 
Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask uh, another point, Maharaj. Shall I? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, uh, here in the Lagos, it said that, that attitude and behavior. The attitude should be is that we should be the humble servant of the Lord, and the behavior should behavior is that we should follow in in, in the footsteps of the previous Acharya and follow his instruction and set an example to uh, the world by by our behavior. Hare Krishna. Okay. So that so that they can take up this Krishna conscious movement. All right. Yes. Attitude. Attitude should be surrendered servant. We should think. So, yeah. we just, think. just to continue from uh, Saki Mataji's point, um, you know, this attitude of taking full responsibility, that's very, very important. Um, if we do not take full responsibility for our acts, then, um, you know, what gives us the right to expect something um, from, from the Lord? Mm. Understand, uh, misunderstanding the free will which has been given to us. Free will. <laughs> yes, yeah, there's proper use of free will and misuse of free will. How we use our free will. The free will should be used to surrender to Krishna. All right. Yeah, any more points on this? Attitude, what should be the attitude? Surrendering attitude. Sorry? Surrendering attitude, Maharaj. Okay, surrendering attitude, yes, surrendered. Here in this purport, it is specifically said that Arjuna as a devotee does not depend on the speculative strength. So understanding that we are having our limited strength, so with that attitude, uh, uh, we surrender, then uh, one one thing is that we don't, our strengths are limited and second thing, when we understand that Krishna is the owner and controller of everything, then we automatically become uh, uh, humble and uh, become subservient to whatever he says. All right. So attitude, in attitude we can depend on the mercy of Krishna, but at the same time we have to endeavor, right? It's not just simply sit back and wait for the mercy of Krishna to fall on us. Maharaj, uh, one uh, question here. Can I ask? Na? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Maharaj, when we, uh, we have also heard that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, Krishna is not, uh, uh, even uh, uh, Radharani or uh, Lakshmi Devi is not able to understand Krishna and Lord Vishnu. Uh, he is so unlimited. Then is there uh, how how far can we go in understanding uh, Lord Krishna? A servant being servant is uh, okay, but should we go into the uh, realm of understanding the uh, Lord? Is that uh, required? Not required? I am not able to get a clarity on that. Well, we will never understand everything of the Lord because the Lord is always expanding and increasing His opulence and His glories and His powers. It's a very dynamic situation, so we can never understand him in full, but we should endeavor to know something of his powers and his pastimes, his opulences. We have, to, we have to know something about him, otherwise how can we think of him? How can we surrender to him if we don't know about him? So. According to our own ability, we study the Bhagavad Gita, we study the scriptures, we hear from the devotees. In this way we increase our knowledge and understanding. But we should never think we know the Lord in full. Of course, that would be foolish. But still, we, we do need to know something about the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj. So our attitude... Huh? Vishnu repeats himself by devotional service. More right. into devotional service in surrounding mood, and yes. then Krishna will reveal himself automatically. Yes, okay. Devotional service means also activities for the pleasure of the Lord. It's not, yes, Maharaj. Not that we sit back and do nothing, we have to engage ourselves. Or in devotional service. Yes. Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's see here. 
All right. This text number eight. Someone can read. Arjun should not think that this is some form caused by a magical trick or material illusion. For the purpose of giving him faith that the form which contains this whole universe is such it ananda, he speaks this verse. By your material eyes, Anena, you cannot see me. You cannot see my purely spiritual form. Shaknosi stands for Shaknosi. Therefore, I give you divine, divyam, eyes. See with those divine eyes. By letting him see with those eyes, the Lord's intention was to give a little astonishment to Arjun, who was thinking himself to be a material person. <laughs> so, Arjuna is getting the grace of Krishna, right? Giving him faith that the form which contains the whole universe is Satchitananda. Okay, we'll go ahead. Oh, there's some more. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is, uh, oh, this is again Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Uh, all right, can somebody read this one for us? Um, Jagruti Mataji is not able to read. Kumardi Prabhu, can you just carry on? Sure, Prabhu. Actually... Oh, what happened? Oh my God. is a principal associate of the Lord and therefore previously had appeared as Nara along with the Narayana avatar. Arjuna does not does not have material eyes like ordinary material person. What is the logic in giving spiritual eyes to Arjuna in order to see a mere expansion of the Lord? When that same Arjuna with his very eyes directly realizes the sweetness of his Lord. But on the other hand, it can be said that the superior eye, which sees only the great, only the great sweetness of Krishna's human pastimes, as in the case of the Ananya Bhakta, does not does not at all accept the glories of the Lord's pastimes performed with the devatas, Devalila. One who has tasted, one who has tasted the juice of the white lotus, cannot relish sugar candy with his tongue. Thus the Lord, wanting to show the majestic nature of his pastimes with the Devatas, Devalila, in order to cause astonishment in, uh, in Arjuna, who had requested just that, gave to Arjuna non-human eyes suitable for the Devalila, Divyam, majestic in quality. The intention of giving such eyes will be explained at the end of the chapter. Hare Krishna. Mm. All right, because Arjuna is connected with the Lord, so he's intimate associate of the Lord. So Arjuna does not have material eyes like ordinary people. 
So what's the logic in giving him spiritual eyes? He doesn't have material eyes. But in order to show, to see an expansion of the Lord, when the same Arjuna with his very eyes directly realizes the sweetness of the Lord, The expansion of the Lord, that's the Vishwarup. So what is the giving spiritual eyes to Arjuna in order to see the mere expansion, to see that universal form? Arjuna had his very eyes directly realizes the sweetness. Arjuna is already every day seeing Krishna in his two-armed form. So he already sees the sweetest form of Krishna. So, at the end of the chapter, we'll hear why Krishna gave eyes. What is Devalila? Devalila, well, that's Krishna's pastimes with, the, could be Krishna's pastimes with the, 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 the devatas, right? The demigods. Uh, Maharaj, please give one example of that uh, pastime. Govardhan uh, We can say like Lord Brahma who took all the cows uh, and the gopas yes. for one Right, yes. Brahma, Brahma Samohan Lila, that Lila is Dev Lila. Uh? Brahma Samohan Lila is known as Dev Lila. What Lila? Brahma Vimohan Lila. Brahma Vimohan Lila. Yeah, definitely there are pastimes with the demigods. We know Varuna, Indra, Brahma, they're all involved with the pastimes of Krishna. And Shiva, of course, is also there. So there's a lot of Deva Leela. So it said uh, the Ananya Bhaktas, the pure devotees, they don't accept the glories of the Lord's pastimes performed with the Deva Leela. Superior eyes which see only the sweetness of Krishna's human pastimes, as in the case of the Ananya Bhav, does not accept the glories of the Lord's pastimes performed with the Devatas. Because they're, they're already seeing something much higher. So they're not very much interested to see the Deva Leela, the Lord's pastimes with the demigods. Thus Krishna wanted to show the majestic nature of his pastimes with the Devatas in order to cause astonishment in Arjuna, who had requested just that. gave to Arjuna non-human eyes suitable for seeing Deva Leela. That's Vishwanath. Yes. Maharaj, in, in this context way that the, the, the demigods, they are folding their hands and they're entering into the mouth of the Supreme Lord and they are in awe and they are scared, would that be something? Yes, right. But we see they're all there in the universal form, right? Yes. And they're offering respects and everything. It could be that, yes. It could be in relation to this universal form. Okay, so we'll hear Sanjay's description of that form, Arjuna's vision. Arjuna saw in that universal form unlimited mouths, unlimited eyes, unlimited wonderful visions. The form was decorated with many celestial ornaments and bore many divine upraised weapons. He wore celestial garlands and garments and many divine scents were smeared over his body. 
always wondrous, brilliant, unlimited, all expanding. So this is Arjuna's vision of the universal form. If we want to dress somebody, he must be a person. So Prabhupada explains here in the morning walk, he said, so even in the universal form, there is personality, divya maya, divya ganda, kitat, kitatma, dressed, well dressed. Well dressed is possible not in the impersonal. If you want to dress someone, he must be a person. You cannot dress the sky. Here is helmet, here is garland where you put. So, in the universal form also, there is personality. Prabhupada arguing. And then the 14th verse, Tatasa Vishmaya Vishto Rishta Roma Dhananjayaha Pranamya Sita, Sita Devam Kritanjaleya Abhasata. There, bewildered and astonished, his hair standing on end, Arjuna bowed his head to offer obeisances, and with folded hands began to pray to the Supreme Lord. And here's Prabhupada's purport. Someone can read? Amraj Prabhu. Hare Krishna, sorry. Once the divine vision is uh, revealed, the relationship between Krishna and Arjun changes immediately. Before Krishna and Arjun had a relationship based on friendship. But here, after the revelation, Arjun is offering obeisances with and with folded hands he is praying to Krishna. He is praying, praising the universal form. Thus Arjuna's relationship becomes one of the wonder rather than friendship. Here Arjun was inspired by the relationship of wonder. And that wonder, although he was by nature very sober, calm and quiet, he became his ecstatic. His character began to free. He was not, of course, afraid. He was by the ones of Supreme Lord. The immediate context is wonder, his natural loving friendship was overwhelmed by wonder and thus is reacted in this way. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, so here we, this was one of the points we wanted to uh, understand properly in this chapter, how Arjuna's relationship changes with Krishna that initially they were friends, but now it, the relationship has changed because Krishna has shown this f universal form and Arjuna is filled with wonder and respect. Folded hands, he's praying to Krishna. He's praising the universal form. So the relationship changed to one of wonder. It's one of the indirect rasas. Right? Adbhuta Shringa, just like Adbhuta Shringa, we wonder when, when Lord Nishringadeva appeared and it was, it was so, devotees were all filled with wonder. Oh, the Lord, who is this? What is this? Half lion, half man, so wonderful form. So here also, Arjuna saw the universal form, he, he was filled with wonder. Oh, and he's become also somewhat ecstatic. He became a standing of hairs. And is, he was, began to offer his obeisances to the Lord with folded hands. So quite a change in his character. All right. 
Arjuna was overwhelmed seeing the universal form of Krishna. Can anyone remember a time when they were overwhelmed by awe and wonder? What was it like? Was it a humbling experience? How was the cause of the occurrence connected, if at all, with Krishna? And what did you learn from that experience? Do you remember a time when, the, when we were overwhelmed with awe and wonder? Anybody has any experiences? Seeing something which overwhelmed you, awe and wonder? Huh? Did you He's asking if it's related to Krishna. That's what Amaranthi well, Ma is asking. It, it may be related to Krishna, it may not. Guru Maharaj, when I went to Tirupati Balaji, I was really uh, in a state of awe and wonder because the, the deity is, you know, it was at the, the morning time and, you know, the Lord was all bedecked with all the jewels, etc. So it was uh, uh, overwhelming. a really yeah, yeah. moment for me. I think anybody goes to Rathiatra at Puri and you see the three chariots, they're so huge and how they're rolling on the road, being pulled by people. It's over, overwhelming, certainly. Quite an experience, awe and wonder, to see Lord Jagannath on top of the chariot and how all the devotees are pulling the chariot. It could also be, you know, this, with tsunami. When the tsunami comes in, you know, the power of the tsunami and how it just shatters and destroys everything. It's so powerful. We had a when the tsunami hit Thailand, it carried a police a police launch two miles in inshore. The the police launch is still there at the spot where it landed. When the, the tsunami, two miles inshore. And so what did we learn from that? We learned more about the inconceivable potency of Krishna, and certainly and how how insignificant we are, so humbling experience that any, in one moment everything can be taken, we can, our life is finished, everything, forgotten. Okay, going ahead, text 26 and 27, all the sons of Dhritarashtra along with their allied kings, Bhishma, Drona, Karna and their chief soldiers also, are rushing into your fearful mouths, and some might see trapped with heads smashed between your teeth. Not a very pleasant sight, right? Arjuna was seeing all of this. Lord Krishna wanted Arjuna to know that they're all going to die, and they were all going to be died. And then this brings us to this point in the chapter. Time I am, you just become my instrument. All right, so we'll stop here today. Are there any questions? Maharaj, I have one question. Yes. Actually, in the Bhaktivedanta purport, it is written that in the scriptures, there are 12 basic kinds of relations mentioned, and all of them are present in Krishna. What are the 12 relations, Maharaj? The 12 relationships, the 12 rasas? Well, we mentioned the five, uh, the five, uh, Primary. Asa, 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 madhuri, these things we know. What are other things are there? Oh, the, the other seven? Well, wonder is one. Wonder? Yeah, yeah wonder is one. And Buddha, you know, I'd have, have, have to look my book, you know, I haven't committed to memory all the twelve, but I'll, find, I'll give you tomorrow if you like. Sure, Maharaj. Sure, I will put it on the chat for you. We can put it on the chat. I'll send it to Padmalochan and he can put it on the chat for all of you. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. That's Matsurya, Madhurya. Yeah, Madhurya is one, yes. Yeah. Dasa Sakya, Matsurya, Madhurya, four things are there. Yeah. Another is which was uh, that, uh, or this one there. Vayana, Vayana and Vibhatsa is there. 
Yeah, five, five primary and seven secondary rasas is what is mentioned here. I'm just seeing. Yes, the seven secondary, seven secondary ones. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put them on the chat for you. Yeah, any other question? All right. No question. No, then, we'll meet, then we'll meet tomorrow. Okay. His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinash Narasimha Maharaj Ki. Jai. 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 Go back to Vrinda Ki. Jai. 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 Yes.